Okay, so welcome to the second part of the tutorial where we're going to be uh, looking at some slightly more uh, or looking at geolocation slightly more in depth. So we're going to talk about some of the uh, extended position data that we can grab from this uh, pause uh, argument that we get uh, within here. So at the moment we're taking the latitude, longitude, etc. But we can do things like accuracy, um, all sorts of things. So we'll talk about them in a moment and the ones that will always be available how to uh, handle them. Uh, we're also then going to talk about handling errors. So for example, what happens if the user denies the request uh, to, for our website to uh, try and detect their location? Uh, what happens if they are on a device that suddenly goes offline or is offline uh, and they try and, uh, you know, well, we, we try and grab their location, we might not be able to if they're offline. Uh, also, we have this timeout uh, option as well. So if the user takes too long, and uh, not the user, if the network takes too long to determine the location, uh, we can then uh, handle that error as well. Um, we have also some extended options that we're going to look at, and uh, one of them is to enable height accuracy. So we'll talk a tiny bit about that. We also have a maximum age, which deals with the caching uh, of, of uh, the location and how often we need to retrieve the user's location. And uh, we're going to look at timeout as well. So that ties into the error handling for the timeout. So we can actually define uh, the timeout period as well. So we're going to look at that. And in the next video, we're then going to look at using uh, Modernizer to, to, to to detect geolocation support, uh, which is really important because if you're on something like Internet Explorer, uh, an old version, say IE8 or something, uh, you're not going to be able to detect the user's location without the use of an additional library. And we're also going to look at using geoposition.js, which allows us for unsupported browsers to also detect the user's location. So we're going to do this and then provide a fallback, which allows us to detect anyone's location. So this is really, really important stuff. So Let's talk firstly about the uh, additional position data that we can retrieve uh, from this uh, callback function. So let's go ahead and extend this. Uh, so let's say, uh, come in, we're, we're going to create another variable. We're going to say accuracy. So what we can do is determine the accuracy of this uh, determined location. So we just do exactly the, exactly the same thing. Uh, we say pos.coords and then we just say accuracy. And that's it. Now, these three are the only that are always guaranteed to be there. We'll always return latitude, we'll always return a longitude, obviously, if they're available, and uh, we'll always return an accuracy as well. So these are the three that will always return. Others may return null. Uh, so we can detect that by saying, do they equal null? If so, then no, we can't use them. So what we can do now is we're not going to apply this to the map. There's absolutely no need to, but I'm going to go ahead and just alert these out. So I'm going to alert out accuracy. Now, I told you in the first video that uh, the accuracy of this wasn't actually that great uh, and it didn't determine my exact location. It was actually a few miles away. Uh, so this is in meters. It returns it to us in meters. So when I click get location, you see that we've got this at 122,000 meters. So that is the accuracy, uh, the sort of window of accuracy. When I click OK, we do the same and uh, it tells me I live down Winterwell Road. So um, the others that we can do are things like altitude. So that's just coords dot altitude and um, the altitude accuracy as well, which obviously isn't going to be available if the altitude isn't available. Uh, we also have things like the heading and the speed. So the heading will be um, uh, from the north it will be uh, the uh, clockwise degree of that. So uh, we also have the speed, which uh, is, a, is measured in meters per second, uh, which also may be null. So we can, we, you know, play around with these. That's that's the great thing around this, play around with it. Um, speed's not gonna obviously um, happen if you don't detect the user's location more than once. So, you know, that doesn't really make a difference. So there's some of the uh, additional um, position uh, properties that we can take uh, back from the position object. So um, let's go on to handling errors where we may have a problem with either the network or the user denying or actually timing out. So uh, let's go down here. What we need to do is we need to provide an additional callback function. I'm just going to call this E. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to create a new function called E, again, a global function. So uh, not advised. Now in here what we can do is we can pass through um, uh, this argument error and we can grab the um, the error code. Now there are three error codes. The first one is just one and that means that the user has denied the request for you to take the uh, position of their location. 
Um, the second is whether if the network's unavailable, if then offline, then we say, sorry, you know, uh, we can't determine your location. And the third is just a timeout, which we can set in the extended options a bit later. So in here, we can provide, um, you know, a switch or, or an if statement or something. So let's just uh, create a, you know, a quick if statement. Uh, and we're going to say if error.code is equal to uh, one, uh, let's just say alert unable to get location. So let's go ahead and test this out. Uh, we'll go over to our browser and refresh. Um, I'm just gonna click get location and then I'm gonna remove the settings for future visits. So now it's gonna ask me, do I want to, uh, you know, uh, do, do I want local host to take my uh, location? I'm gonna click deny and then it says unable to get location. And obviously we don't show the location on the map because I've denied it through my browser. Now the second one is uh, whether if you know it's unavailable. I'm not going to go ahead and unplug my internet connection right now. Um, but uh, if I was to do that, then that would be the second one. And the third is a timeout. So if the network takes too long to respond, which is going to be really difficult for me to uh, recreate here, so I'm not going to go into that one. But we know we've got one is denied, two is unavailable, and three is timeout. So uh, these can be applied here just as a sort of fallback. You might want to go and go ahead and let the user know that they're offline, or let the user know that. Uh, their location is taking too long to to come back okay cool so let's go ahead and just uh, re-enable this so we can look at some more things uh, let's click get location and let's clear this click get location allow and it grabs my location not my actual location but uh, you know near enough Okay, so the extended options, well, where do we place these? Well, uh, we place these inside curly brackets here. So we're sort of, you know, passing in these uh, these settings here. Um, the first one is enable high accuracy. Now let's go ahead and do this because uh, this is quite an interesting one. I currently uh, don't have GPS enabled hardware because I am working on my normal computer and my location has been determined probably by my IP address. So I'm gonna say enable Enable high accuracy, true. So let's take a look at uh, what happens here. So I'm gonna refresh this and click get location. Nothing happens. Now, well, it does happen, but high, uh, high accuracy, you know, fails almost. So you've gotta be careful with this one because uh, on specific devices, this could fail. Um, the reason being is just based on sort of, uh, you know, different permission settings, uh, accuracy settings, things like that. If you do have a GPS enabled device and you run this, you're going to get uh, high accuracy enabled every time. Um, we also have an extended option, which is maximum age. Now, this is sort of the cache window of how long you want to determine the user's last location. So let's just say I picked up my stuff and moved house down the road and then... Um, I uh, determine my location again. If I had a large maximum age, this might return my cache location. So it might return, um, you know, the, the same location I was at four hours ago, for example. Now this is measured in milliseconds. So we could put something like 10 milliseconds, which mean that, you know, well, we could do that, but it would be silly. But um, essentially then that, you know, when I determine my location, the next time I do it, we're absolutely sure that we're going to, refresh and return the non-cached location information. You may want to uh, provide the user with the ability to um, determine their location several times. So if they're traveling, for example, and you don't need absolute high accuracy, uh, you can set the maximum age to something low. So all you're going to have to do there is uh, here just say maximum age and then a value in milliseconds. So we could say, for example, 100,000 uh, milliseconds, so 100 seconds, uh, or we could say something as low as a thousand. Um, the larger the value, obviously, the uh, the the you know we're going to return a, a cached version within that period. So uh, let's go ahead and get rid of that one for now. The last one is the timeout. So this is going to be the amount of time that you know we need to give the uh, the network to um, retrieve our location. So I'm going to test this out. I'm going to say timeout one. And I'm going to go over to my browser again and I'm going to refresh and I'm going to click get location and it works because it's being extremely quick and I believe, yes. Okay, so it works, but we've set a timeout anyway uh, to one and um, 
uh, if you would like to handle this, so for example, if the uh, if the uh, time is well, it's taking too long to return the time, uh, we could create some kind of um, if statement here. So error.code, if that's equal to three, alert too long. I'm not sure if setting this to zero would actually work. Uh, let's go ahead and try this out and see what happens. Yeah, too long. So I've set it to zero, which sort of you know, we've caught the error here because it's taken too long for uh, to return our location. So we're giving this zero seconds to return our location, which is obviously silly because we need some time to allow uh, allow it to be returned. So, uh, for example, if you need the you need you know if you need this quickly, change the timeout setting. Okay, so in the next video, we're going to look at using Modernizer to detect this support, and then. If we can't detect support, we're going to use geoposition.js. Uh, and what this is going to do is it's going to allow us to detect location on unsupported browsers.